Hey everyone, Eric here from the Got another video for you guys today. Hope you guys are all doing well. Nice outside. Well, it's got a little bit colder. We're pretty close to uh, Arlington, Virginia. We're in Alexandria, right outside of uh, Washington, D.C. And we do lots of data recoveries. And one of you guys sent in something for us to do data recovery. And it is the SanDisk USB that's in here for data recovery. Let's see what's going on with it, right? Because you guys are pretty excited like I am. Um, we made a lot of videos before about showing this one, usually when it's bent. Um, on how to, to do a data recovery for that, but this doesn't look to be too bent, it looks very straight, so it's not here for that. So let's see what it actually is in here for. Let's see what's going on. See if we can connect it and see what's going on. Oh no, my camera went up. <laughs> okay, we're back. So let's go ahead and connect it and let's see what we get here. So we're just gonna connect it and see our symptoms. There's no light on this one, so we have it connected. Uh, let's go to our uh, disk management. Probably pull it over here uh, for you guys to see. Let's switch to it. Okay, so it's loading. It's taking a little bit of time. Like just could be my other drives in there. So let's see what we got. So we have nothing. So it's not even showing up here whatsoever. We have my data drives, but we don't see a 16 gig USB. Usually it would probably be around here. But that's just your basic Windows disk management to see if there is anything going on. There's no light indicator to see if you would get at least some type of power on or something. So let's, we need to go ahead and open it up and then take a look inside and see what's going on. Okay, so let's just open it up. Okay, so the NAND is your main, that's where everything's stored there. It's your data, it's your storage. Then we have our main controller there and then your main USB connection. So do we see anything? It looks very clean, right? Nothing looks out of place. So since we don't see any damage to this USB, that's phys physical, like any type of damaged connections, lifted pads, we wanna see if there's gonna be some obvious type of short or anything else there. And the way to do that is to use thermal imaging. And that's gonna indicate if we find a short along that maybe there's some type of power delivery issue, something's causing that to happen. And the thermal imaging, if there is a component that's screaming for joy, lighting off fireworks, and you'll see right now what I'm talking about. So we have the USB, you got my hand there, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try plugging it in. Because we are the police and we're looking for the criminal, we wanna see where the criminal is hiding. If I plug it in, let's see what we get here. Oh, oh, what's that? So the thermal cam is showing that there is an issue with one of the components there. Let's take a look to see what, the, what this component is. We're gonna go ahead and interrogate them and uh, see if they are our culprit. But we need to go under the microscope because we at least have an idea of where to start. All right, so let's go over here. All right, so let's go under the microscope. Let's see what we have here. All right, so we're taking a look, right? And we see our input, so we have four pins. Um, we show a lot of this in our uh, other videos. You guys are interested, I won't go too much into it, but our connections look to actually be fine. Uh, we show fixing that and, and everything, but it's important to know because if there is a crack along the side, if something's bent along the, the top end of the USB, that's where your power and data lines are, right? That's where they start. So if it's going up this way, then that makes sense, right? If we're not getting anything or if it's completely dead, that's where we want to start, but that's not the case. So our culprit seems to be this big one. It's Big E. Big E, rest in peace. Or this could be Eric, but my, my name's Eric, so it can't be Eric, right? We can test that. Let's remove it. Okay, let's remove it. Okay, just clean up our area. Now we remove the short, right? This should be it. So we can test it now because why? We still have the pads there. And if the pads are still indicating, that means there is still a problem, right? So we can test it one more time. So we can test one of two ways. So if we can go back what, upstream, right? Because upstream is where this area is. And then we can also check the pad going downstream because that could be where maybe this area is. So let's go ahead and test it. Okay, so here, you see that. So we go down here, we see that there's a short, but if we go up here, that means closer to where our power input is, right? There is nothing, so that's eliminated. But the, the one that's going downstream here looks to be a problem. And if we look closely, 
And uh, oh, you guys are a little bit, let me shift this a little bit so you guys can see it. All right, great. So if we look really closely, where is this, this pad uh, going to? If we see, we have our next culprit is right here. And there is a capacitor that's over here, right? And it's this one because this one connects directly right to it here. It's leading out there. So technically, there should be still a short, right? Okay, so let's test it. Oh, man. So we see a short on this cap because this capacitor is now showing a short. So we're following the trail. So let's go ahead and just remove it real quick. Oh, look at that. All right, perfect. Okay. So now uh, we're following the trail. We'll put this to the side. Okay, so let's see um, if this cap is giving a short. Yep, so we don't see that there is a short on this capacitor either because we're touching it. Yep, that doesn't give it, so there's no short here. So um, we don't see a short on the capacitor, so we need to go back because this hasn't been uh, been going well, right? So let's put this on over the side. We definitely want to make sure we keep that. So if we zoom in even closer and we see where this is going, where is this pad going here? So it's going along this way and especially the back one is going here. But if they're both giving a problem, where do they both go into? Both their trace lines are going to what the controller. So now it looks like we might have a shorted controller. We know that the controller is causing a short there. So we have one of two options what we could do for it. We could do one, we can replace the controller. We would need an exact donor for that. And for our second option, what you could do is a chip off data recovery. And that is remo removing the NAND and uh, reading the data from the NAND um, with specialized uh, data recovery tools. It's not as simple as just reading from tools. You need to recreate uh, what this controller is doing. So the controller does a lot of different things. You have translation, uh, wear leveling, the error corrections, and uh, data optimizations. We had to recreate uh, specific controllers on what they do because you have Fizen controllers, you have Sandus controllers, some are even encrypted. So to start off our chip off data recovery, we want to remove the NAND and we want to make sure the pins are totally clean so there's no issues with connectivity. Let's go ahead and we're going to uh, put this in. This needs to be perfect. So usually use a microscope and boom, just like that. Let me check for all the pins. Everything looks to be touching. Let's make sure. Last pin. So we have a great connection. All the pins look to be good. So let's plug it in with our adapter and we're gonna be using our advanced data recovery tools from here. We know our controller, we can input that and we only have one chip, which you can have multiple chips, that is another thing that we actually save for another video. So stay tuned for that. We are able to create a special dump file that copies all the contents on the NAND into a special image. It takes a little bit of time, but it is uh, ready. And after we finish it from there, we get a lot of bit errors and we can correct that via ECC. After that, there's a lot more work that's involved as we have to recreate a solution for this particular chip to allow us to read the data properly, which we're able to do. Now we can see the contents of the data and recover the data for the customer. So we hope you guys enjoyed watching, doing this data recovery for this uh, SanDisk USB. You see we have all the advanced tools to work on any type of SSD, um, uh, reading data from the NAND directly, also replacing you know, controllers, working with controllers and doing lots of other things with uh, USB data recovery as well as SSD data recovery and uh, NAND and flash data recovery as well. If you guys enjoy, please leave a like, it really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. If you guys are interested in doing a data recovery with us for any type of SSD or NAND uh, device, especially like a USB, we're located again right outside of uh, Washington DC in Alexandria, Virginia. If you guys are local, you can come on by. Otherwise, we have all the contact information linked in the description below for our mail-in service. So thanks a lot for watching guys. Take care, bye.